before we go through a real example, uh, let's actually go through the technique we'll be using. So techniques is this, and this is like the framework. First thing, make sure you establish how much time you have and how many questions you're gonna solve. This allows you to allocate time appropriately during the interview. You definitely should not dive into solving a problem. Put that effort, whether it's that one minute, two minutes, whatever, to understand the problem, understand the subtleties. Clarify any confusion, run through, literally run through examples like inputs to test cases. And inputs, okay, for this input, this should be the output. So when I say test cases, I don't mean like solve the problem. I mean, okay, for this input, this is the output you expect. For this input, this is the output you expect in the different test cases. And by spending time dwelling on that, that also helps you, makes it less likely that you forget a key point because you not only have you kind of read the question or listened to the question that was dictated, but you've actually got a feel for it because you've, you, you've actually run through some um, test cases. So you have a, a deeper understanding. And then you put a checklist. And the key thing you want in that checklist, those key things you shouldn't forget. Oh, we're looking for the minimum this. We're looking for the maximum this. Um, whatever else is in the problem. Um, and then next thing, you craft solutions. Ideally, always try to do two, but obviously time box this. Hopefully your first one is in brute force, but if it is, then try and improve it. Even if your first one looks optimal, st still try and see if you can improve it. Then pick the optimal solution. Pick the most optimal solution, but if there's like a tie, then choose the one that you can, you're more confident about implementing in the time frame you have and that you're able to you know, discuss the runtime and space complexities and so on. I would recommend before you start implementing, actually run through test cases. Now, if, if you've been listening so far, I mentioned you know, going through inputs and outputs, just saying, okay, for this input, this is the output you expect, for this input, this is the output you expect. Now, you're actually running through those test cases with your algorithm. So you're saying, okay, if this is the input and I do, and I flow through my algorithm, what output do I get? Is that what I expected? The reason why this is valuable to do now, again, time boxes is before you start coding, then you know whatever your solution is, is correct because you verified it. And now all you have to do now is implement this correctly. Now I say skeleton code here, because I see sometimes what candidates do is they just dive in and start coding in free, free flow form. And then I see them going back and forth and tweaking the, which is just dangerous. I think you can get away with that. It's like a problem you solved and you know inside out, but that won't be the case in all interviews. I would strongly recommend skeleton code. It's not pseudo code. It's like you, it's like having scaffolding that protects you from yourself. So you're laying out the key chunks of the code, which means you don't have to keep as much in memory and it protects you from forgetting key things. So you using your checklist, you know, you just lay out on your algorithm, lay out this skeleton code that, okay, I'm gonna do this, then do this validation, then we're gonna run through this loop here and get this, and then we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna return the result. You can do that in comments. And then at this stage, you can then explain a high level logic to your interviewer. You can do it as you're laying out the skeleton code or after. So at this point, you have a correct and optimal solution, and you've also explained it to the interviewer. So now you can just focus on coding. You don't have to explain whilst you're coding. If you want, you can explain the runtime complexity and space complexity at this time. Like you can do it like at a high level and you're saying it's roughly this, but maybe you'll verify it once you're done uh, implementing the code because there's always a chance you miss something out. But get commitment from the interviewer, like they're happy with your solution. Because sometimes they might say, can you do something better? Or they might recognize something. is Maybe you misunderstood a problem and this is like a good point for them to, to point that out. And once you're done, implement. You go for it. Um, and if you've, you know, if you know how to code, you've done enough practice, implementation should be straightforward, especially with your skeleton code to protect you. And the last thing you must do is before you commit your solution, you verify the correctness. And a lot of these interviews, you can't run your code. So you have to go through, run, literally walk through your code with test cases. And this is where people mess up a bit because they trust too much in their algorithm, like what they think the algorithm should be doing. But when, when you're walking through, you literally walk through the logic and see what you get. And this is how you can catch if, you've, if you have a bug or something. But once you've done, you verify the correctness, you, you, know, you check your checklist, you've satisfied everything. To be fair, you don't need this checklist check at this point because you've kind of done that with your skeleton code. But you know, if you have time, just go again, just make sure you've satisfied everything in checklist. And you commit your solution, you say, hey, I'm done. And that's pretty much it. So let's go through an example. So let's say you're an interviewer, you, you, you've done the intros with the interview and the interviewer says, do you have any questions? Or even if they don't ask, before they're about to start giving you a coding challenge, 
you should make sure you've asked you know how much time you have how many questions because then you know how you allocate your time you know how much time you have to think of optimal um think of crafting solutions and think of optimal solutions and you know do skeleton code and implement to verify correctness so you can allocate whatever minutes you want and then you know they ask a question they say okay hey find the let's use something quite straightforward find the kth largest element in an array or something let's say the problem is even more involved but this is the gist of the problem so make sure you understand the problem i would definitely strongly recommend you have some kind of checklist um and you say well kth kth largest element so that's great and you can then run through and say okay if i have um this input let's say you have um this array and they say k is two then the k largest element is five so the largest in this case k is sec two right so second largest the largest clearly six the k largest is five and this input what we've done is put an unsorted list you can go through other inputs maybe with a sorted list a list in reverse so in ascending order descending order and so on and just get that feel for the problem. This is quite valuable because some people may have solved like the kth smallest, and when they're trying to solve the kth largest, they end up implementing the solution for the smallest. So it's very important to just stress that it's the largest. Be extra even careful if you've seen the problem before because then that autopilot thing could kick in. So you craft solutions, so what are the with thought processes? So you can say, okay, so this is my checklist. This is a very minimal checklist. This is you know what we've done here. We've gone through some test cases. Um, test cases or whatever. So we have this input, we have the output. You can do you can do more of this. I'm not going to do that here. And then you craft solutions. So you, you just say, okay, what are my solutions? And you could do something like, by the way, as you're doing this, you're literally walking through your thought process for your interview. You can say approach one. And the value of this is you're forcing yourself to think of multiple solutions. So let's say the best you can think of is sort the array and then return the kth element from the well so the array in let's say ascending order and then return the kth element from the end of the array okay what is the runtime complexity this is a good time to do it so you're sorting order n log n and then getting the kth from the end is just constant time so that's like n log n complexity you can do the space complexity as well depending on if your sort is in place or not you probably want to do an in-place sort. Um, so this is just the runtime complexity. You can do space complexity as well. Uh, this is not this is not bad. N log n. You know, if I was in an interview and I was getting like order n cubed, order n squared, order n factor, I start getting worried. N log n. I'm not too worried, but I'm not necessarily happy. I tr see if I can do something better um, because I'm trying to get the kth largest element. This makes me think of a heap because especially like a max heap or mean mean heap in this case a max heap because you know heaps there's this idea of a max heap that gives you the largest element of the list so that my brain already sees largest and makes me think max heap give me the largest element but if i want the kth largest so like the second largest okay i get the largest take it out then get the next largest and keep going to like satisfy whatever k is so i think of a heap based solution solution so you know heapify which is you find the array, which is order n, um, and you know, pop the kth element. So I pretty much have, which is k log n. So I have an order n plus k log n. Is this better than this? Um, let's see. So n log n, and then k is a constant. So this might as well be n plus log n. So this is clearly better. There's also another approach, uh, quick select. Uh, it's not something like someone will come up with if they haven't like, if they're not familiar with the approach, but that's something else you can look at. But at this stage, I'm already kind of happy with this. You can check with the interviewer. If they're still looking for something better and you're aware of this quick select, you can kind of you know talk about that approach as well. At this stage, what have we done? So we've crafted, crafted solutions. We've kind of chosen the optimal one we kind of like. Okay, let's run through some test cases uh, mentally. I'm not, yeah, so you mentally run through the test cases. In this case, like you kind of already know this is like straightforward because once you heapify and then you start popping, you know you're going to get the largest and the next largest. So you can just think, okay, what if the heap is empty and things like that? You can easily handle this. So in this particular problem, 
you don't necessarily have to exhaustively go through test cases because this is the heap is going to work. It does its job. It gives you the max at each time. So you get the max out, then get the next one and so on. Skeleton code. We kind of already have skeleton code here, to be honest. Um, so we don't need to do this, but if we were literally doing skeleton code, it would be something like um, heapify order n, where n is you know the number of elements in the array, and then it could be um, pop and maybe return this is literally what I mean by skeleton code. So it doesn't take too much time and it just allows you to focus on implementing each chunk of code. So you, at this stage, you can explain the high level logic. Again, we already did that here, so we don't need to repeat here. Or maybe what you could do instead is instead of this, this layout, if it's simple enough, you can even do something like this. Anyway, at this point, the interviewer knows exactly what you're gonna do. So you can just focus on implementing. I'm not gonna do that here. But once you're done implementing, you know, you've explained the runtime complexity and space complexity. Again, we kind of did that here because in this problem, it was, at least it was easy for me to do that. Some problems is easier to do after, um, especially if you're not familiar with elements of that problem. So we have done our skeleton code. We've explained the high level logic. We've explained the runtime complexity. Our space complexity, uh, in this case, we're hippifying the existing array, so we're not introducing any extra space and we're popping from the same array so it's constant space really um, we've implemented I'm skipping that but yes you've implemented I leave that to you and then you verify the correctness so you walk through your code just to make sure what you've you've actually implemented your intent and it works as you expect and once you do that you say hey interviewer I am I'm good in our checklist you know we, we made it very clear that we want to return the kth largest. And we already put like an example test case. So just to make sure I'm not skipping any steps, as part of the verifying correctness, you check against the checklist that, okay, in this example, is are we returning five? In the other test case, are you returning what you expect? And it, after having walked through the code, if that's the case, you're good. You can commit and completely move on to the next question, rinse and repeat. Obviously, at this point, the interviewer can ask follow-up questions, and obviously, you can um, address those and answer them. But this is a rushed demo of this framework, and it will greatly help you minimize mis all these mistakes that crop up in interviews. The only thing that could mess you up is if you actually don't have the knowledge but that's something you're supposed to do during your preparation but this is more about how do you execute on interview day so hopefully this helps you there's some other techniques we can talk about to give you like an edge over the competition but we i don't think i have time for that in today's video but i'll just run through quickly like in terms of handling unfamiliar scenarios this is associative recall technique you can apply that you can do while you're learning that will help you when you do face unfamiliar scenarios even when you're stuck just prime your brain with certain keywords that can help you make connections and spot how to approach a problem you know things you can do the day before the interview or the morning of the interview then techniques for learning fast and retaining what you learn and so on the last thing i do want to talk about though is the conditioning platform the conditioning site it's like a site designed to help you optimize your interview prep performance i'm just going to give you a quick quick uh demo of what the site actually looks like right now and how it could help you so this site is very different from sites you might have heard about like leak code or need code like this is so this site is literally designed to optimize your performance your interview performance from day one so from how you learn and every stage during your preparation well everything is optimized for performing well at interview and we're trying to minimize how much time you spend learning we're trying to make sure you retain what you learn we want to make sure you have fun so we're trying to make it gamified and it's all optimized for interviews. So if you have any of these problems, you know, have a look at the site and see, you can see the kind of things you optimize for, like brain freezes, forgetting what you've learned, um, missing edge cases. We have solutions for all of these things. So you can check out the site. We have um, we have interview readiness checks. We have AI assisted learning. You have AI mock interviews. Um, we do coaching and human mock interviews. So we give you like a higher decision. So definitely check out the site. Um, let's see what I can, we have crash courses, we have custom learning parts, so you can actually 
say hey um, these are the topics I'm weak or strong in I will generate a learning path for you and you can solve all sorts of challenges and check out the very detailed solutions so I'm just going to click on one and show okay you have a problem you have a code editor AI assistant we have very detailed thought process based solutions that walks through what the you know thought process is so you have a clear understanding but we also you know do quick solutions we give hints as well and we have um, solutions in different programming languages um, in this particular screen you can see we've locked the run button and the reason why we do this is we want to actually get you to get used to solving these problems without um, being able to run your code so you have to be able to commit and say oh I'm correct dry run you know your code make sure it's correct and be confident that's correct before you 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 say you're ready so that's something that's good to, to do maybe early on you can still run your code so it's not like we disable this all the time but definitely check this platform out um, I think the AI assistant in particular would be very useful to get help you detect bugs it can give you feedback on your code you know give you hints provide clarification and so on so definitely check this out and the AI mock interviewer and we also have a blog and we have workshops so check out the site explore sign up and hopefully see you at one of our workshops see you on the website um, yeah have a good day